Hello there, Earthling. Welcome to the King Angel Show, where together we discuss, review, and react to music videos, movie trailers, art, books, culture, knowledge, a little bit of everything. I'm your favorite anti-niche creator, King Angel, and you know what? I thought it would be pretty cool for us to check out together the official trailers for the Crow franchise. First one released in 1994, starring Brandon Lee. May he rest in peace. Um, if you don't know what happened to Brandon Lee, um, he was fatally shot during the filming of a scene while making this movie, and it sucks. Uh, my personal opinion, uh, and it, it's based off of this movie and seeing his acting in this movie, I sincerely think that if this would not have happened, he would have had such an amazing career in Hollywood, I thought he was a pretty bright star in you know this whole show business because uh, he showed a lot of discipline while making the movie. He was able to showcase his martial arts skills, uh, his his uh, the way he handled like dialogue and overall it was pretty phenomenal acting. So yeah, I, that is just my own personal opinion about that. I I, I truly think that. He would have made it pretty big in Hollywood. Um, nonetheless, uh, the movie as a whole is a pretty kick-ass movie. I absolutely love it. I love the the dark, grimy, uh, sinister tones that the movie has. It's uh, well, I mean, I can't talk much about the movie without mentioning the soundtrack to it. Uh, if you can look up the track list for the soundtrack. <sighs> I mean, Rage Against the Machine, The Cure, Nine Inch Nails, all in one same place. And that's only mentioning three out of like, what, like nine, ten other bands that are there that are all pretty superb 90s bands. And, well, still bands that are um, making music to this day. But just those three that I mentioned first is enough for you to understand just how great this soundtrack is. Um, if you have Spotify or Apple Music, whatever streaming services you, you have, or if you can just like buy it digital or whatever, I highly recommend it. Please check it out. Um, and when you combine all these things, it, it just makes for one extremely entertaining, uh, thrilling movie experience. And that is what the first movie is for me. Uh, second one is okay i guess uh it's still better than the ones that came out uh, subsequent to it um deftones is in the movie i don't know if you know that that's a little fun fact there uh iggy pop is in that uh, second movie as well um overall i mean it, it follows the same lore as the first movie and you know it's it's i guess entertaining at times it doesn't hold as well as the first one uh, I do really like the connection that they have uh, obviously between the first one and the second one which is a Sarah uh, in the second one obviously she's grown up now but um, the fact that they continued with her was pretty cool I actually like that uh, I skipped on the third one I, I didn't really care about it, to be quite honest with you um, when I was looking up the information for each movie uh, like I read the information about the movie before we watched the trailer was when I noticed that Kirsten Dunst is in that movie and uh, I mean she's in my favorite movie of all time which is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind so I guess maybe this weekend I'll give it a shot and I'll watch it uh, it has better reviews than part four which is Wicked Prayer Whew. and I had to <laughs> kind of breathe in and out there because uh, I saw that movie and the only reason why I saw it, it was at a house that I was at, and uh, we were smoking, and I had just smoked a joint. When I sat down, the movie had just started, and I just stayed there, because I said, oh, well, whatever. And I can safely say that that is an hour and change that I will never get back. And as much as I've pleaded to life to please try to compensate that time to me in some other way, it just has not, because wow that movie is trash it's not even subpar it's just trash probably one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life uh sucks that we have to watch a trailer for it but it is part of the fran part of the franchise but 
damn. I mean, Edward Furlong, <sighs> Tara Reid, David Baranis, all give probably the worst acting performances for sure of their own acting careers. I could safely say as well, maybe ever, but I know there are worse movies than this one, but wow, it's just, you can tell when uh, directors and production companies, they don't really give a shit about what they're making, and this is a clear example of something that was just uh, digested and shit out just to make some type of money from it. Try to keep it alive somehow, but whew, horrible, horrible movie. But, yeah, uh, we will, like I said, we'll read about the movie before watching the trailer. Uh, once we watch the first trailer for The Crow, uh, the original one, uh, I'll read about Brandon Lee's death. And then uh, once we go through all four trailers, I will talk about the fifth movie that has not been released or officially announced, but it is in production as, uh, as we speak. And uh, two of uh, the Crow projects that were scheduled to start production, but it just never happened. Uh, but they have pretty interesting plots to it, so I'll read it. But um, stick around, that is at the end of the video, or more towards the end of the video, to be more specific. Uh, we'll jump right into uh, reading about the first trailer, and then we'll jump into the trailer in and of itself. So. The Crow was a 1994 American superhero film directed by Alex Proyas, written by David J. Sho and John Shirley. It stars Brandon Lee in his final film performance as Eric Draven, a murdered musician who is resurrected to avenge his death and that of his fiance. The film is based on James O'Barr's comic of the same name. Production on The Crow was struck by tragedy when Lee was fatally wounded during filming. As Lee had finished most of, the, of his scenes before his death, the film was completed through script rewrites, a stunt double, and digital effects. The Crow is dedicated to Lee and his fiance Eliza Hutton. After Lee's death, Paramount Pictures opted out of distributing the film and the rights were picked up by Merrimax, who oversaw The Crow's completion. So let's jump right into this first trailer for The Crow. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, just sometimes, the crow could bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. I remember wanting to dress up like the crow for Halloween. Many times. I never did it. So then why should do it for next Halloween? Even if it's played out. I mean, look how awesome. Aren't we all? Go round of applause for him. That was so cool. The crow on the floor with the fire. Awesomeness. Cool. So that was the trailer for The Crow. We will move on to the next one, which is uh, part two. But before that, we'll read about Brandon Lee's death. So on March, March 31st, 1983, at EUE Screen Gem Studios in Wilmington, North Carolina, Lee was filming a scene where his character, Eric, is shot after witnessing the beating and rape of his fiancée. Actor Michael Massey's character, Funboy, fires a .44 Magnum Smith & Wesson Model 629 revolver as, at Lee as he walks into the room. A scene filmed two weeks before Lee's had called for the same gun to be shown in close-up. Revolvers often use dummy cartridges fitted with bullets, but no powder or primer. Uh, during close-ups as they look more realistic than blank rounds which have no bullet. Instead of purchasing commercial dummy cartridges, the film's prop crew, hampered by time and money constraints, created their own by pulling the bullets from live rounds, dumping the powder charge but not the primer. 
then reinserting the bullets. Witnesses reported that two weeks before Lee's death, they saw an unsupervised actor pulling the trigger on the gun while it was loaded with a powerless but primed round. Having not removed the primer, the primer could detonate with enough energy, energy to launch a bullet and lodge it in the barrel. In the fatal scene, which called for the revolver to be actually fired at Lee from a distance at a, a distance of 12 to 15 feet, the dummy cartridges were exchanged for blank rounds, which feature a live powder charge and primer, but no bullet, thus allowing the gun to be fired without the risk of an actual projectile. As the production company had sent the firearms specialist home early, responsibility for the guns was given to a prop assistant who was unaware of the rule for, uh, for inspecting all firearms before and after any handling. Therefore, the barrel was not checked for obstructions when the time came to load it with a blank round. Since the bullet from the dummy round was already trapped in the barrel, this caused the .44 Magnum bullet to be fired out of the barrel with virtually the same force as if the gun had been loaded with a live round, and it struck Lee in the abdomen, mortally wounding him. After Lee's death, the producers were faced with the decision of whether or not to continue the film. Uh, Lee had completed most of his scenes for the film and was scheduled to shoot for only three more days. The rest of the crew, the best, sorry, the rest of the cast and crew, except for Ernie Hudson, whose brother-in-law had just died, stayed in Wilmington. Paramount Pictures, which was initially interested in distributing the crow theatrically, originally, originally a direct-to-video feature, opted out of involvement due to delays in filming and some controversy over the violent content being inappropriate given Lee's death. Uh, let's see, so uh, the cast and crew then took a break for script rewrites of the flashback scenes that had yet to be completed. Uh, Lee's stunt double, Chad uh, Stahelski, was used as a stand-in and CGI was used to digitally superimpose Lee's face onto the head of the double. The beginning of the movie, which had not been finished, was rewritten and the apartment scene remade using computer graphics from an earlier scene of Lee. Wow. Interesting. Uh, Obar later remarked that losing Lee was like losing his fiance all over again, and he regretted ever writing the comic in the first place. Damn. To that point, huh? It's crazy. All right. We'll move on to The Crow, City of Angels. This is part two. Uh, it is a 1996 American superhero film directed by Tim, uh, Tim Pope. From a screenplay by David S. Goyer, it is a sequel to the 1994 film The Crow and the second installment in the in the Crow film series. And like I said, this one continues on with Sarah, the uh, little girl from part one who is now an adult. So let's check out, uh, check out this trailer. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. I thought that Eric was the last. I never imagined there would be another. It's another time. It's another world. And another has been chosen. You can tell it's not as not as dark as the other one. The Crow, City of Angels. Cool. Well, uh, that was a trailer for The Crow, City of Angels. Uh, this one is uh, the um, Crow was actually played by Vincent Perez. Um, Sarah is played by Mia Kirshner, and the main villain is played by Richard Brooks. Um, like I said, Iggy Pop is in this movie. Uh, it doesn't have the same, like, dark eeriness as the first one. Um, it was okay. Ah. Comparison to the other ones, it was 
Oh, the other one, because again, I only saw Wicked Prayer. Uh, but... Yeah, I remember playing the video game for this one, and it was horrible. Like, there's not really anything else I can say about it. It was pretty boring. It was one of those like, side-scrolling beat-em-ups, but... Uh, I remember, remember playing it back in the day, and still have the same opinion to this day, and it sucked. It sucked pretty bad. Uh, we'll move on to the third one, which is The Crow Salvation, released in two in the year 2000. Um, also an American superhero film. film. Uh, this one's directed by uh, Bharat Naluri. This one stars uh, Eric Mabius as Alex Corvus, and it's their third installment of the Crow film series that was created by James O'Barr. Um, this one was a... Uh, direct to video. I think the next one as well, Wicked Prayer, was direct to video as well. But yeah, let's check out the trailer for Salvation. Uh, this one, like I said, stars Kirsten Dunst. And uh, I only found out because I saw the, the poster that's on Wikipedia for it. And I was like, oh shit, that's Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> well, let's see, I'll watch it this weekend maybe. Who knows? be with you forever. Only forever? Come on, no, no. The Crow legacy continues when a young man is wrongfully accused of murder. Alexander Frederick Corvus, do you have any last words? I love Lauren. I'm innocent. Now, with the guidance of the Crow, he sets out to find the killer. Where did you come from? I'll make sure everyone knows that you're innocent, that you loved her. What do you want? I want to know why! I can't be alive, not without you. Eric Ooh. Mabius, Kirsten Dunst. The Crow, Salvation. Yeah. Thank goodness I skipped out on that one. You know what? I'll skip. I'm good. I'm not even going to try with that one. That looks horrible. Uh, even The Crow, like the makeup and whatnot, it looks really weird. It looks like a B movie. Not even a B movie. Probably like a C movie or something. One of those D <laughs> movies. Like very low production. Uh, had it Kristen Dunst already done Interview with a Vampire at this point? Like, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? What compelled her to accept this role and do it, but. Hey, like I said, people have their 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 high points and they just have their low points. And yeah, this is probably one of Kirsten Dunn's lowest points. Uh, mind you, she's a, she's a phenomenal actress, so I guess this is just like a mistake, a little a little rock in the road, I guess. But wow, yeah, completely forgettable. But I don't think it's as bad as this next trailer that we're going to watch together. Whew. All right, this is The Crow Wicked Prayer. Oh, man. Someone does. And it gets weird at the, the end. It has like a, soul to the land of the it dead. goes like way more supernatural than what it's supposed to. Then sometimes the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. Didn't we kill that guy? Wow. 
Wow, Benny Trejo's in this movie too. <laughs> Wow, not even Dennis Hopper can save this. Yikes, not even Dennis Hopper could sprinkle some magic on this crap. I didn't even read about it. That's how... Just wanted to get through this trailer. That's how bad it is. This whole movie. But, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it. This is a 2005 American superhero film directed by Lance uh, Mungia and inspired by Norman Pat... Partridge's novel of the same title. Wow, it's a novel. It is a fourth installment of the Crow film series. The film was filmed. <laughs> the film was filmed in the summer of 2003. It had a one-week theatrical premiere on June 3rd, 2005, at AMC Pacific Place Theater in Seattle, Washington, before being released to video on July 19th, 2005. Like the other sequel to the cult film, to the cult film, The Crow had a poor critical reception this <laughs> this movie has a on rotten tomatoes the film has an approval rating of zero 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 nada zelch <laughs> very much deserved this film is caca i had completely forgotten any tray holes in this movie Damn, dude. Okay. So, um, in regards to uh, part five. So, we'll read about part five. And then we will read about the projects that uh, never made it to production but were planned. Okay. So, The Crow, they kept the same name as the first one, obviously, is, um, is an upcoming American supernatural, uh, supernatural superhero film directed by Rupert Sanders from a screenplay by Zach Balin. It stars Bill Skarsgård as Eric Draven, the Crow, a murdered musician who is resurrected to, who is resurrected to avenge the deaths of himself and his fiance. Played by FKA Twigs, nice. I I love Twiggy, dude. I love FKA Twigs, man. She's such a phenomenal musician. I uh, just such a huge fan of the EPs and her, you know, and I'm, I'm not even going to get into FKA because I could just go the whole video talking about her. She's phenomenal. Shout out to her. Uh, wow. She's in the movie. Okay. Serving as a remake of the 1994 film, the, uh, the film is based on James O'Barr's comic of the same name. Interesting. So the film entered development in December 2008 with Stephen Norrington stating that he he would uh, write and direct a reinvention of The Crow. It entered a complicated production process with various directors, screenwriters, and cast members attached at various points. Filmmakers Norrington, Juan Carlos Fresnadillo, F. Javier Gutierrez, and Corin Hardy were initially signed to direct while Bradley Cooper, Luke Evans, Jack Huston, and Jason Momoa, Momoa were all cast as Eric Draven during various points in development. Skarsgård was cast as Draven in April 2022 and Sanders was hired to direct soon after. Filming began in July with locations including Prague and Munich. Nice! Oh, hell yeah! And let me tell you, I just watched Barbarian and... Dude... Uh... Bill Skarsgård, dude, he... What an amazing actor. I mean, wow, not only is he it, but he, he tricked me. He tricked me in Barbarian. I highly recommend that movie. If you haven't watched it, I mean, it's not like the best horror movie ever, but it's really good. It's really interesting. And again, Bill does an amazing job. So I highly recommend, and I'm, I'm thrilled that he's in this movie. Wow, I cannot wait. Uh, Last but not least, we will read about the two projects that uh, didn't come out uh, scheduled, but they never made it to production. So, the uh, first one is The Crow 2037. So, initial, initial development on the third Crow film was announced in August 1997. When it was announced, Rob Zombie would be making his directorial debut with The Crow 2037. White Zombie 
co uh, covered the KC and the Sunshine band hit I'm Your Boogeyman for the soundtrack of The Crow City of Angels. And after seeing Rob Zombie's work on the video he produced for the song, Edward Pressman offered Zombie the opportunity to helm the third Crow film. Had the film been made, Zombie planned to shift focus and tone from the revenge angle of the previous two entries to a more horror-based approach. The film would have began in 2010 when a young boy and his mother are murdered on Halloween, um, Halloween night by a satanic priest. A year later, the boy is resurrected as a crow. 27 years later, and unaware of his past, he has become a bounty hunter in a collision course with his now all-powerful killer. That's the first one, which sounds pretty damn interesting and I would have loved to see Rob Zombie's take on uh, The Crow. That would have been awesome. Uh, the second one is The Crow Lazarus. So in July 2000, rapper DMX had been in discussions with producers about a fourth Crow film titled The Crow Lazarus about a rapper who chooses to leave the music scene for the love of a woman and is killed during a drive-by shooting. The rapper is then reincarnated as The Crow in order to take revenge on the gang responsible for his death. Production had been slated to begin in November of that year, but the project ultimately never came to be. Makes sense. I would have loved to see that one too. I mean, the first one with Rob Zombie uh, draws my attention a lot more, but, you know, either or, I, they would have been great projects to see um, created. And it seems like they, they're both interesting. I mean, they could have been a lot more interesting than this fourth film, Wicked Prayer. And the plot to the, the one that Rob Zombie could have directed sounds pretty interesting. So I'm thinking that they might have would have they might have uh, their best bet would have kind of gone down that path and <laughs> doing the one with Rob Zombie. But here we are today. Uh, that fifth one, the remake with Bill Skarsgård, day one because again he's a great actor and I love FK Twigs and it just seems pretty interesting whole cast so far is worth going out and watching the movie and like i said please watch barbarian it's wow i loved it um and yeah it's basically it for uh these uh trailers that we just watched the crow franchise um if you want to further support me remember to become a patreon member for two dollars a month uh, you get full unedited videos uh, my concert videos uh, Discord channels that are private and exclusive to Patreon members. Uh, we watch movies, music, album listens, a bit of everything. Um, you can also join my public Discord server, King Angels Entertainment Lounge. It's uh, it's free. It's free, and we can uh, watch movies together, album listens, a little bit of everything as well. We do community gaming, multiplayer gaming. Join that public Discord. Like I said, that's King Angels Entertainment Lounge. Uh, you can find me all across social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, you can like this video, comment on it. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you've seen these movies. Uh, do you also think that Wicked Prayer is a pretty bad movie? Um, let me know uh, in the comment section. And yeah, just uh, share it out to your loved ones. And a little pause there. I apologize for that. And then, um, yeah, last but not least, I'm also a live um, live streamer here on YouTube and on Twitch. I go live on either platform, either YouTube or Twitch, uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for True Crime and Murder Mystery. Uh, we react, review, and discuss cases. And on Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for my variety show, uh, we do uh, knowledge, culture, um, we definitely learn something new every Saturday and if you already know it, it's a great refresher because knowledge is power and it's important to uh, keep education at the highest standard because it is the only uh, feasible way human beings will survive and that is the truth. Um, so yeah, this was, like I said before, the trailers for the Crow franchise. Uh, the first one is still the best one. There's no doubt about it. There's no arguing. And I'm about to go watch that movie right now because it's that good. Thank you.